Lesson 1-5 is about adding integers. And in this lesson, we have two main objectives. First, students will be able to use models to add integers. And second, you're going to be able to use rules to add integers. So we're really just looking at two different ways you can use to add these integers or put these numbers together. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Now, first I have a little trivia question for you. A car goes forward 20 feet and then backs up 20 feet. Where is the car parked? Well, you could use a model to show it. Here's my little car. Boop, boop. Yeah, that works. All right. It goes forward 20 miles, or 20 feet, excuse me. And then from there, it backs up 20. So where does it end up? Well, back to where it started. So, it really, it seems like it didn't move at all. And with these, we look at the additive inverse. When opposite numbers are added together, the sum is zero. We move forward 20, so plus 20. Then we move back 20, so minus 20. When you have two opposites, their sum equals zero. And this is an important idea for today's lesson because we're going to use this when we model them. So, if you take a look, all of these, except one, are considered additive inverses. Here, this is one because we have negative one and positive one. So, that's an additive inverse because those are the same distance from zero. We have three and then we have a minus three. Those are opposites. Oh, we have one with variables, 2x minus 2x. That also is considered to be an additive inverse because 2 times that number, if you subtract 2 times that same number, you're going to end up at 0. The only one that is not is this 3x minus x because if you do 3 times x and you take away only one of the x's, you're not at 0. So, first thing we're going to look at in today's lesson, lesson is using those models to add integers. Now, I have here little yellow boxes to represent positive numbers. So, for every positive one, I'm going to put one of those boxes out there. And for any negative numbers, I'm going to put one of those red boxes out. So, each one is worth one, and each one of these is worth a negative one. So, because you don't have little boxes you can put on there, you might want to just do a positive sign for positives and a negative sign for negatives. It'll work the same way, and I can show you both. So, use models to find 2 plus negative 5. So, first I start with 2. Well, 2 is a positive number. There's positive 1. There's positive 2. I just used a model to represent that. And then I'm adding 5 negatives. So I have 1 negative, 2 negatives, 3 negatives, 4, and 5 negatives. So I represented both pieces here. Now what we look at is back to that additive inverse. If you take a, a positive number and then the negative of it, that equals 0. So because we have a positive here, and then we have negatives in here, well, a positive in one and then a negative one, you can cross out one of each because that would be zero. Plus one minus one is zero. And you can do that for every single match you have. So I could cross out those. Now I take a look. Oh, there's no more left. So my answer is negative one, negative two, negative three. These are the only blocks we have left. They're all the same color. So my answer is negative three. Again, and you would have made those two positive signs and five little minus signs for this one. Here we have this one. Use models to find seven plus negative three. I'll help you set it up, and then it's going to be your job to solve it. So first I look. Oh, seven. Well, seven is positive, so I need one of these for each positive number. So positive two, positive three, positive four, positive five, positive six, positive 7. So I have 7 positives. Now I go to the next piece. And now we're adding 3 negatives. Well, I have to go to my red ones for negatives. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And again, because you don't have these boxes, you can make plus signs. So 
four, five, six, seven positives, and then negative one, negative two, negative three. Now from here, I want you to do the rest. I want you to cross out those inverses, so one of each color, and then see what you have left and write your answer down. Go ahead and pause me now. All right, so if you were to look at those additive inverses, well, I have a one positive, I have a negative. Those cross out. I have a positive and negative. Those cross out. And I have another one. Oh, now I'm all out of red. So I only have these left. And each one is positive. Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. My answer is a positive 4. All right. So that's one way you can add integers. You can use uh, models. Another way is a number line. And we dealt with number lines last lesson. So here they're back again. Two, or example two, excuse me, says from the surface, a diver goes down six feet and then comes back up four feet. Find negative six plus four to find where the diver is at. All right. So first things first, I need to number my number line because that was not done. Negative two, negative one, zero. I'm just going to keep going through. There we go. Now what ends up happening is you start with what they give you. And here they're very nice. They tell us we're going to do negative six plus four. Again, you could use models, all right, just like what we did before. However, this time they want us to try to use a number line. It's just another way to solve it. All right, so we're showing you another option. So find negative six. All right, I'm going to start with that first number. There it is. Now here it says plus four. So we're adding four to it. If we add, we go this way. If we're subtracting, you go this way. So if it said negative four plus negative two, well, you're adding more negatives. Here we're adding positives. So what you end up doing is making four jumps or hops this way. One, two, three, four. We end up at negative two. Our answer here is negative two. All right, so here we have two examples, and it says either way, choose. Use a number line or model to find the sums. What I would like you to do right now is pause me and then solve both one and two, and when you're done, we're going to see if you're right. Go ahead and pause me now. All right, hopefully you had a chance to work through those, and I I might show you both ways on both of these one, uh, both of these, just so you can see again how both options work. So first, I'm going to use models. I have negative one, which is one of my reds, or a minus sign for you, and then I have oh plus four, so four positives. One, two, three, four. So each one of those was worth a positive. All right, and then I cross out any that have both a negative and a positive, any groups. Oh, that's the only one I could cross out. I'm left with one, two, three positives. My answer is a positive three. Or again, you could use a number line. And I'm going to just start it at negative two. All right, and then I just take that first number. I'm starting at negative one, and then I'm adding four. Again, I'm adding, so I'm going to go towards the positive side. One, two, three, four. I end up at three. So either way, you get an answer of three. So either one of these methods work. And again, we could do the same with number two down here. All right, we have two plus a negative six. Again, I could use models. I have two positives. And then it says, well, I'm adding six negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I take a look and find the ones that are additive inverses, or one of each. Well, here's a positive negative, here's a positive negative. There are more, no more positives left, so this is my answer. I have one, two, three, four, four negatives. So my answer is negative four. And again, you could do the same with a number line. And I'm just numbering it. I started at negative five. There we go. And I take that first number. I'm starting with a two. 
And then I'm adding six negatives. I'm adding negatives this time. So instead of going to the right, I end up going to the left because they're negatives. One, two, three, four, five, six. And look at that. I end up at negative four. So those are both methods you can use, a number line or you can use models. Now, however, there's another way to do this. There's some quick little rules to use. And when you use these rules, you basically look at the sign in front of each number, and that'll tell you what to do. If they're the same sign, so basically they're both positive or they're both negative numbers, what you end up doing is adding the numbers and then putting the sign that they are back up in front. All right, so if they're both positive, add those two positives together and your answer will be positive. If they're two negative numbers you're adding, add those negative numbers together and then throw that sign in front. All right, so if they're the same sign, and A is a great example of this one because if you take a look, I have negative 20 plus a negative 15. Both 20 and 15 are negative. They have the same sign, so you add them together. So, 20 plus 15 is 35. Now, however, because they're both negative, your answer is going to get more negative. If you have negative 20 and it got negative 15 degrees colder out, it's going to be colder. So, negative 35. All right? So, that's how it works if they're both negative or both positive. And then there's the other rule. If they have different signs, and here B shows that. One's positive and one is negative. If one is positive and one is negative, you find the difference between those numbers. All right. So basically, you look at the absolute value. They keep bringing up absolute value here, but you subtract those two numbers. And then whatever number was larger or had the greater absolute value, you put that sign in front. So as I already said, we have a 13 that's positive and a 17 that's negative. Because they're different, subtract them. 17 minus 13. And as you notice, I didn't worry about that 17 being negative. Forget the signs for now and just subtract the numbers. 17 minus 13 is 4. All right? So I know my answer is going to be 4. I just don't know if it's positive 4 or negative 4. This is when you look back at those original numbers. Generally, 17, well, always, I should say, 17 is larger than 13. Because 17 is larger, it had the greater absolute value. So whatever number is bigger, you give it that sign. Here, negative 17. 17 is bigger, so our answer here is negative 4. So we have this one, and uh, we're going to go ahead and use it. A player scores 22 points. He then gets a penalty of 30 points. What is the player score after the penalty? Well, you need to figure out what we're going to do. You have to decide what numbers are positive and what numbers are negative. If a player scores 22 points, well, that's good. That means it's a positive 22. However, then it says he got a penalty of 30. Oops. That means it's not good. So a penalty... You're taking away. So we have a negative 30. Now again, you could use models. You could use a number line. Except you get bigger numbers like this. It's a little unproductive. You're making 22 positives and then 30 negatives. It's a lot of work. This is when those rules come in handy. So we're going to take a look. We have a 22 and then a negative 30. Are those numbers the same? Are they both positive and negative? Or are the signs different? If you take a look here, the signs are different. A positive 22, a negative 30. So if you go back to that rule for different signs, you subtract the numbers. Forget about the negatives right now and just subtract. 30 minus 22 is 8. Now I have to take a look. Oh, 30 was on the top because it was bigger. Going to the original, well, 30 was negative. So my answer must be negative. My answer here is negative 8. And again, I can't stress enough. Whatever number is larger, all right, that's the sign your answer will have when these, with these different signed problems. All right, ooh, and the number 5, we have a little bit of work to do. We have, fine, negative 7 plus negative 4 plus 13 plus negative 5. Well, I say... Let me write all these down so we can see them a little bit bigger. All right, 
order of operation, if you take a look, well, we're adding or subtracting all of them, thankfully. So that means we just start from left to right. And here we have, to begin with, negative 7 plus negative 4. Again, I can use these rules. If I have negative 7 and I add 4 more negatives, that means they're the same sign. If they have the same sign, add them together. 7 plus 4 is 11. Because they're both negative, it's a negative 11. And I'm going to rewrite the rest. All right, so now we have negative 11 plus 13 plus negative 5. All right, from here, I want you to do this piece, negative 11 plus 13. Go ahead and do this part right now. Um, give you a little hint, though. Again, look at the signs. Are they the same or are they different? Go ahead and do that. All right, uh, if you were to solve this, I hope you'd see that they're different. Negative 11 and then a positive 13. The signs are different, so you subtract them. Forget about the signs and subtract. 13 minus 11, because 13 is bigger than 11, you get 2. Now, 13 here is a bigger number, and this time it is positive. So my answer here is a positive 2. And then I write the rest. 2 plus negative 5. Same idea occurs. I have a positive 2 and then a negative 5. Those are not the same. One's positive, one's negative. So I follow the rules for different signs. You find the bigger number, which is 5. Bigger absolute value, I should say. And then, oh, 2 is a smaller one. Subtract them. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I know my answer is going to be 3. I just have to decide, is it positive or negative? Again, you look at the bigger absolute value or bigger number, which is 5. And 5 to begin with was negative. So my answer here is a negative 3. All right. So we have a little bit of a quick check, and then we're done for tonight. And I want you to just write the answers below it. So go ahead and pause me now and solve them. Here we go. Uh, will the sum be positive or negative here? If you have negative 6 and you add 4. Well, you could go through the rules. You could solve it if you wanted to. You could use the um, number line. You could use the models, whatever. But if you were to take a look, negative 6 and you add 4 to it, well, they're different signs. 6 minus 4 is 2. And negative 6 has a bigger absolute value, so it would be negative 2. So your answer here would be negative, as you can see. All right, and then here, what is the additive inverse of 3? So what number is the opposite of 3 that would give you 0? Well, if you were to take a look at that, if we have 3, what number do I have to add to that to get 0? That would be negative 3. And here, well... What is the additive inverse of absolute value of negative 2? That could have been tricky. You first have to find out what is the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. All right, and then, so the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Now, what's the additive inverse of that? Well, that would be a negative 2. I guess it doesn't want to turn. Oh, well. Uh, that was lesson 1-5 on adding integers. Have a good night.